So I saw when I make a Spider-Man video, it gets like a lot of views and I'm a sucker for growing my channel. So I just thought of this video and I think it'd be a cool thing since no one's made a video on it, I'm pretty sure. But I also think you guys know the answer. Also, I want to say that I'm going to try to branch out of just making why I love videos and maybe make some normal reviews on things I don't have a strong passion for, like the upcoming Barbenheimer video I'm planning and maybe Asteroid City if you guys are still interested. But anyways, will Gwen and Miles get together? Yeah, I think most signs point to yes, but I guess I should explain why. So for starters, there's a lot of hate for Gwen Stacy on Twitter. Mostly it's people saying that she's a traitor, that she's worse than Miguel, and that Miles should end up with spider bite. But if you understand why Gwen was keeping secrets from Miles, then it'll all make sense. You see, at the start of the movie, she stated that she joined the band not to talk about her feelings, but to hit them with drumsticks. A band so I could talk about my feelings. Well, I, did. I joined it so I could hit my feelings with sticks. She goes through most of this movie avoiding her feelings, avoiding confrontation, and it doesn't help that when she revealed her secret identity to her father, he tried to arrest her. If she revealed such a big secret from one of the most important people in her life and it ended up like that, why would she reveal another big secret to Miles? This secret that Gwen is keeping from Miles is that his dad is going to die when he becomes police captain. And she even joins Miguel in the big chase to catch Miles and stop him. Some may see this as her betraying him and being selfish, but from her perspective, you have to see that she's scared. If she stops working for Miguel, then he'll send her home, and she'll have to face her problems and deal with a city that wants her arrested. However, when Miles swings home after escaping the spiders, Gwen realized something. She realized how to live without fear. Oh, I sound like Daredevil. <laughs> but basically, seeing Miles not be afraid, even go against his best friend, showed her that you must face your problems head on if you want to overcome them. And a little later, you can see how she becomes braver when she argues with Miguel for not catching Miles. Maybe you weren't hard enough on him. Gwen, don't do it. You let him go. You Me? Catch him, Gwen. Okay, let's all just take a Peter. breath. After this, however, she's sent home. At this moment, she's betrayed by Jess Drew and is now forced to face her problems head on. This time, though, she's no longer scared. She confronts her father and learns that he won't become police captain. And to her surprise, her world didn't fall apart. So now, she's learned how to truly reveal a secret, and that if you have someone you care about, fight for them. You shouldn't be scared to make things right. It's a beautiful arc. And this is character growth. Gwen has flaws, and it's a good thing that she has so much depth, and isn't just known as Miles' crush in these movies. So, to anyone that thinks Gwen is evil and a traitor, and that Miles should end up with spider bite of all people, try watching the movie without getting your biases in the way. Now, some of you might be asking, aren't they just friends? That's likely because the last movie ended with the two claiming to just be friends. And people joked about Miles friendzoning himself. To be 100% honest, it's kind of hard to predict whether they'll stay friends or move beyond that. One thing I saw someone notice is how Gwen loves to touch Miles. Like hugging him, poking him, patting him. She likes to touch him. but. I'm friends with plenty of people that are touchy, it's kind of just how some people are. In fact, some people might not be touchy at all, but enjoy when people pat or hug them. It's all depending on the person. However, how often does Gwen pat and poke her other guy friends? Not that much, if at all. I just realized I sound like those popular people at high school that know like the whole social circle. that are like, are Gwen and Miles dating? Are they dating? Now, for my comic readers out there, you might remember a crossover event with Miles and Gwen called Sitting in a Tree. And yeah, they made out in that story. But at the end of the event, they pledged to just be friends. This was likely to shut down any headcanons and rumors and questions about their relationship. The most you'll get is Earth 8's depiction of their marriage, which we might get to visit in the next movie. So, if in the first movie they declared to be friends, and in the comics they did the same thing, Who's to say they're not staying friends by the end of the franchise? Well, there are a few reasons. First, I think it would be narratively unsatisfying if they had a static relationship. For the past two movies, they've shown the chemistry these two characters have, so it would make no sense to just not take it anywhere. Gwen also isn't a traitor. She's going to save Miles and help him fight against Miguel. It's plain and simple. Second, people can change. As I explained earlier, Gwen went from being scared to talk about her feelings to confronting them with her dad, and she learned how good communication can be. 
It's why when Miles learned that she betrayed him, she stammers and cringes. She didn't know how to talk about her feelings at that point. But since she's capable of change, we shouldn't automatically assume she won't change her mind about dating him. Finally, Gwen has definitely learned that Miles has an obsession with her thanks to looking at his notebook, and she isn't turned off by it. She obviously likes the guy, and she's made it clear that when she's with Miles versus Hobie or Pav, it's different. I know what she's talking about because I have a friend just like her. When you're with that certain person, you don't need a social battery or to put on an entertaining act so they don't get bored of you. You can just exist with each other. One thing to note though is that in the comics, these characters are very different. Gwen is around 19 when they hang out and Miles could be around 17, I don't remember. But that's basically a junior in high school and a sophomore in college. On top of that, Gwen is a drummer and Miles in the comics isn't the spray painting artist he is in the movies. They also don't work that well with each other and Gwen seems to have a lot more chemistry with 616 Pete. Those two weren't made for each other in the comics. But still, similar interests don't guarantee a relationship. Take Hobie and Gwen for example. They're both in a band, like rock music, and Gwen has had multiple sleepovers in his dimension at his house, and she literally wears his clothes and leaves her toothbrushes there. While it might make Miles jealous, it should be noted that Hobie was only doing this because she was homeless. Remember, Gwen couldn't go back to her own universe. And speaking of jealousy, when Miles showed interest in Spider-Bite, Gwen yanked him back. She clearly doesn't want him flirting with other girls. So with that all being said, I think it's safe to say that Miles and Gwen can, and in fact, probably will get together. And if not, I think they're going to have a nice warm hug at least, but hopefully they'll have the upside down kiss. And let's just ask Kaylee Seinfeld if she thinks it's Gwen and Hobie or Gwen and Miles. I'm thinking long term here, Gwen and Miles. But let me know your thoughts. Come back to this video when the third movie's release and see if I was right. I'm like 80% sure it's getting delayed though, especially after hearing how Sony execs are treating the animators. But with that being said, thanks for watching. If you want more Spider-Verse content,